So let me show you a little bit about CMX2's kind of preferences and some other, you know, ancillary functions that are actually super useful um, that you may not use all the time, but when you need to, they're really great. So first and foremost, let's say you open up a Padlet like we have here and you have a previous layered file, whether it's a PSD or a TIFF, something that you saved that you liked before and you use CMX2 on it. So you come back to this file and you have other layers on here, but you have your CMX2.5 you know, folder group, layer group, excuse me, and you like the palette on there, but you don't have that here. Maybe you didn't save the preset. Maybe you, you forgot about it and you think, you know, gosh, I'd like to get that back. Well, the good news is you can. As long as you're selected on the CMX 2.5 folder, you come down here to the bottom left, but the second from left, we, excuse me, the bottom right, the second from right, we have get gradient, which is quite the opposite of apply gradient, right? So we click get gradient, boom, and it pulls all the metadata from that CMX 2.5 folder on the layers and you have that palette. And now you can save it, which is the next function I'm going to show you. That's this button on the right. If you say save as preset, you didn't save it before, but now you want to. So you hit save as preset and you have all these options here. Obviously you can name it. I'm going to call it blues and pinks. Okay. And then I can make it like a favorite, but here's where things get really new. We can add it to a group. Now at the moment, I don't have group set up because I have a fresh install CMX 2.5, but I can create one. So let's say I'm going to call it, um, I'm going to call it pastels because that's what I'm going to do. So create new group. There it is. Blues and pinks will be inside pastels and save. And when I come over here to gradients, Okay, I'm presented with a couple of things. One, all my previous ones that I created with CMX2 are here and they're all in a folder called unassigned. See a little arrow right here? I can click it and close unassigned. Underneath that is pastels. It too has an arrow. All your folders will. You click it and there's blues and pinks. Okay, so you can keep assigning new palettes to the preset folders if you want. So let's go back to explore, go back to our crazy color palette and let's pick something like this area. Notice I'm using the marquee for it and I hit analyze and now I've got some kind of a palette that works pretty well for me. Cool. All right. So I like it. Now I come over here. I can apply it right now if I really want to and just overwrite that, but I can just immediately save it. If for some reason you want to, you can just immediately save it. You know what? Save as preset. So I'm going to call this one. Oh, I don't know. Uh, browns and sky brown sky. And I'm going to apply it or excuse me, assign it to pastels, which I already created earlier. I can also create a new one if I wanted to hit save. And when I go back to gradients, you'll see that inside blues and pinks and brown sky. So if I double click this one, you'll see it assign it. I can double click this one and it'll assign that. Double click this one and it'll assign that. See how that works? So once again, just keep that in mind. If you're trying to figure out, well, how do I get an old palette from a CMX2 folder group? Then I have the, uh, get gradient button. And then I have the save presets. And that's just kind of the basics on that. We have a whole video on presets that you should check out. All right. Another kind of interesting button here is the top left button. You may not use this a whole lot. It's a little reset button. Okay. All that does is remove any settings that you might have. This can be useful if you really have been digging deep into exploring a color palette and changing all kinds of settings and going into the, you know, the advanced editor. And for some reason you're just like, no, this has not worked or I'm about to extract a new palette and start a fresh idea. Might be a good good time to hit reset. It just sets it back. Uh, it does not remove your presets. It doesn't go back to factory reset, but it does remove all of these settings back to the default. So you can just kind of start fresh. You're not gonna use it a whole lot, but it is there. Now on the top right here, this little icon that pops up, it is our settings. So we open that, we have a few basic settings. I just wanna show you. You can choose what to name. The layer stack if you want okay presets will automatically take on that name if you apply a preset as you can see over here brown sky it'll apply that to the folder keep yourself organized okay but you can choose what sort of default name you want okay you can choose to overwrite the layer name with that if you want and then minimize history steps we just kind of recommend that you leave that on it keeps things easier so you can hit undo and it has more of a use for you uh in general we don't really recommend hitting undo because nothing is permanent in CMX2 settings, you can just turn off whatever you turned on, <laughs> but it's a good idea to kind of keep your history steps minimized for other things that you're doing in your workflow. Now below that, these are all going to be your preferences, your preset preferences, not so much about gradient presets, but the way CMX2 functions initially. Default opacity when you apply 35%, default blend mode, soft light, and then your blend if settings, also you can choose a default. Now 
35% soft light and no blend diff settings is pretty common. That's usually how I start, which is why we set it that way. However, if you find a certain workflow that works for you, you can pick literally any blend mode that it'll default to, and you can pick any type of blend diff, you know, luminosity range if you want and whatever opacity you want to start with. Keep in mind that if you use presets though, when you call a preset that you've already saved, these don't matter. It'll use whatever is on the preset just to be clear on that. But it's pretty cool so you can kind of tailor it to how you want. Um, by no means is 35% opacity soft light just like the best, it's just what I do. <laughs> and, and then I always tweak, I always change it back and forth depending on the situation. But those are the personal preferences so you can tailor it to be, you know, to, for efficiency reasons, you can choose the way you tend to work most of the time, okay? Now, back here we have on the uh, gradients, I wanna show you guys one more thing, you can, close these panels, uh, these folders, if you will, any way you like, okay? But the presets also have some settings as well. So if you click that, you see that we have use animations, show preset counter, and solo mode. Okay, so let me explain what these mean. First of all, use animation, if you turn that off, you'll see that these just show up. And you might think, well, that seems like a silly thing. Well, we don't mind the animation. We think it's cool, keeps things kind of interesting looking, but if your system is a little slower, if your system's a little older, or you're having any issue with that animation process, you can just turn it off real quick, okay? Show preset counter, as you can see, that has to do with that big number on, on the unassigned 154. That'll be good in case you just want to, at a glance, know how many presets you may have. Now, solo mode, that means that when, you, let's say, I open unassigned. If I scroll down, there's a lot in there, but if I scroll down to pastels and open that, whoop, it closes the other one and only pastels will open. See that? So it toggles one folder at a time. If you want that sort of thing, that kind of accordion pops up and down. Oops, didn't mean to move that. So it's just kind of, a, again, these are silly little things, but they can really tailor the experience of CMX2 to what you like and what you need. Okay. Just keep that in mind.